So how did you get to that? On your computer? So you're on your phone, right? Oh, I got to figure out how to do this. Hey, Sarah. Hey, how's it going? Man, if I was better with technology, it'd be going a lot smoother, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought well, I can I'd... guarantee you're better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I had this all figured me. out, but um, so did you, you found the link in the bio, right? Yeah, I saw it. Okay, so let me figure out. I thought that would be easiest for everyone, and now I'm realizing maybe that's not. Um... Are other people having difficulty? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I mean, I think it's on me. Like what I did, I tried to set a reoccurring Zoom and I think I just messed up the meeting IDs now. Um, now I got, to, <laughs> uh, I'm going to have some emails from some people. But give me- Because uh, I know I, signed, I signed up for this one a couple of days ago and then I was like, okay, I know I'm Thursday. So let me just double check because um, I hadn't gotten the email. And then when I saw your IG post, I saw you said you were doing the- um link through your bio so I just clicked on that and then it brought me here so I figured it was easy okay so it does work but maybe I'm just thinking maybe some people on computers aren't able to do it maybe that's what it is oh probably um so I'm gonna try to so sorry just give me a few minutes here I'm trying no, to yeah, um, send it good. out okay okay thank you. no problem
Hey Mia, sorry. Um, we got there was some, some confusion with the link, so I'm getting uh, more links out to everybody. So just give us a few minutes, okay? Almost there, guys. Like two more minutes and we're good to go. No problem. All right. So one, two. Weird, like days when it's just slow. Med, me and Charlie in here, and Nicole. All right, what's up with you guys, man? Sorry about that little uh, static there at the beginning. How are you guys? Doing good, doing good. Doing good? All right, cool. Sarah, I know you're good. You've been in here. <laughs> so Mia, you said you're um you're you're new to crypto. I am. I brought um a little bit of crypto today for my second oh. time ever. Okay. Yeah. What'd you get? Yes. Bitcoin and Ethereum. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Smart. Good what time. are you Good. under? What platform do you use? I use Coinbase. That's the only one I know to use. Mine, I'm under Robinhood because I signed up for Voyager and Coinbase and they're both taking forever to approve me. And I'm like, this is nuts. And I don't want to buy any more under Robinhood. Like I hate to not trying to get burnt. Yeah, you definitely don't want to buy any more under them. Um, do you have a VPN, Sarah? No. You think okay. that'll make it quicker? Well, even with I mean Coinbase. Well, with the VPN, you can just go onto an international site right. and buy it from an international site. So, so yeah, I do think it would make it quicker, but um, obviously, it would cost it would come at the cost of paying for the VPN. 
But you would have it for the next, you know, however X amount of months you paid for it. You said you don't recommend Surfshark anymore? No, I no, Surfshark is still good. It's just for what I do because I'm streaming this Zoom and I'm recording this Zoom and I'm pulling up web pages to show on the Zoom. It has a I have a lot going on on my laptop. So right. I have to use like, you know, kind of the highest rated, the highest rated one to make sure, you know, it comes out clean. Um, Surfshark is not bad, but this one is a little, I use now ExpressVPN. It's just a little bit more expensive. So um, I suggest Surfshark because okay. it's 60 bucks for two years compared to the one I pay for is $10 a month. So, you know, it's 120 bucks a year. Right, right. How's their service? Mm -hmm. And uh, Coin, Coinbase is cool for like, um, you know, just get, it gets the job done, especially if you're just going to hold on to your crypto and you don't plan on being active, like, you know, trying to trade it or swap it in and out and things like that, then I, I would suggest <laughs> Coinbase because now that they're publicly listed, you know, it gives them that kind of, uh, I guess, credit, you could say, or validation, you could say, so Right. Not, nothing can really go too bad yeah it gives them the merit nothing can really go too bad on there and if it does they would have to actually step in and replace you know or they'd have to do the right thing because now they're mm -hmm. in the um, eyes of you know the government so okay i have all the invites finally sent out sorry about that boom i'm gonna get this thing down eventually um so we'll just wait a little bit more time for everyone to get in here and while we do let me share my screen What's up, y'all? Hey, how are you? What's going on, man? Very well, very well. Thanks for letting me in. <laughs> oh, you already know. You already know. You know how you know, you know, I'm always on the issues when it comes to first trying to get these things started. So you were right I on the I thought time. it was me. No, I thought it was me. You told on yourself. <laughs> well, you That's know. That's I got in here quiet. I was like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I um, I don't know what I did. I, every time I think I have it set up perfectly, where I'm like, I think I make it easiest on you guys to like get in here, and then it apparently never is. So I don't know. I gotta no, I gotta no find worries. The right you're style. you're you're doing more than enough. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um. Okay. So I just want to do a quick count on my end. So we got one, Jackie, two, Richard, two, Sheena, three, four. Okay. So we may have about four more people joining, but we're just gonna go ahead and start because it's already five fifteen. Boom. Now let me just get my screen right. This down here. This is in chat. All right. Okay, cool. So we got beginners. What would everyone say their level, I guess, of understanding crypto is, right? It's from a level of we can just keep it simple, one to five, five being, you know, you know a lot, one being, you know, you don't know that much, but you do know something, and zero being, I've never really heard of crypto, um, you know, I just want to learn more. So what do you say, Mia? What's your level? Definitely a one. One, that's fine. And Sarah, I think we've already spoken. Sarah, yeah, you guys are both probably, what, two or three? I think I'm two just because i would agree too yeah I'm, <laughs> i've always been more into the stocks like i'm trying to like get perfected in stocks but since like i know crypto is like the next big thing i just want to kind of get ahead of the game and get educated so i can be well-rounded in all all the markets smart yeah i mean you might as well start learning about it now right um especially yeah. you're, you're actually already a two if you know anything um Oh, sorry. I just responded to something. Never mind. Um, if you know anything about stocks, then you're already at least a two because you know how markets work, right? You don't. You understand that when everything is red, it's a good time to buy, and you should not be scared. Compared to when everything is green, you know, maybe it's not the best time to buy. We want to wait to you know get a better entry price. So, so give yourself a little bit more credit than you're given now because you already have at least taken that step, right? So for the people that don't know, we're gonna, I'm going to give you some web pages and some things that some tools that will pretty much help you with your crypto journey. Um, so starting out, let's say we'll go with 
this website. So it's called coinmarketcap.com. And on CoinMarketCap, it gives us a bunch of information right here at the top. It tells us how many types of cryptocurrencies there are, how many exchanges there are, the total market cap, and the volume within the last 24 hours. So this is huge right here because usually anything over 200 million is a lot. I'm sorry, 200 billion. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Anything over 200 billion is a lot. And it's at 300 billion. So there's definitely a lot of people into the space right now. Um, I have a live trade on right now. And you guys don't let me forget that I have this on. Let me see, because I was on a call the other night and it didn't work out too well for me because I forgot I had this on. So give me one second. Let me double check this. Keep going. Okay. Oh, we're crushing it right now. Let's move up the stop loss real quick. Hold up. Move the stop loss up real quick. 49, put our stop loss. Now we can't lose more than a hundred dollars. See, you set our stop loss. that golden level. Oh, you already know. See, uh huh. <laughs> see, you guys are gonna be talking just like that here shortly. You're like, what the heck? So, Salil, um, Salil is on the call today. He's a good personal friend of mine. Um, and he wanted to learn about cryptocurrency as well. So, we were speaking about it like right before we got into this call and I just showed him kind of what Fibonacci's are and how to use TradingView. And he was like, man, can I get into the next one? Cause this is a lot. <laughs> he said, I know you feel like this is a basic information, but this was a lot. So Salil, if you can hear me, Sarah just learned last class, you know, what golden levels were and she's already on it. So don't feel like you're too lost, my friend. Yeah, we'll come right. back. Um, okay. So, <laughs> so uh, again, this is where we start coin market cap, right? So we go to coin market cap and let's go to Cardano just today because that one's been, you know, the very highly talked about today. And I think it's up 18% over or 20% over 24 hours, which is huge. Oh, wow. This is called a cup and handle. That's cool. Um, so on this page right here on coin market cap is where you're going to find out your general information about the asset you're speaking of, right? So the asset, the crypto asset we're speaking of is Cardano. And then it tells us under here how many people's watch list it's on and the rank of it. So it's ranked number five. It's on 800,000 watch list. The current price is $1.91. And you can get a lot of good information out here to find out whether it's like more of a scammy type situation or more of it's legitimate or, you know, the best way to play it. Um, so you would just scroll through here, come to the bottom. And at the bottom, it gives you a detailed outline of what's going on recently with it. So ABA price live data. What is Cardano? So what are they? What do they do? Who are the founders? This is very important. Who are the founders? Because you can kind of find out if you just literally come in here, we see this guy. I mean, I know who this is because I'm a big fan of Cardano, but if you don't, so Cardano was founded by Charles Hoskinson. So we literally, Google is your best friend when it comes to crypto. I mean, obviously with research in general, but we just start typing in, we find out as much as we can about whatever crypto asset, again, this is, we're doing Cardano, whatever crypto asset, we're just going to Google and find out as much as we possibly can about it before we buy it. Boom. So this is Charles Hoskinson. So I already know about him. We're not going to go into, you know, who he is and what he does, but he is a co-creator of Ethereum, which a lot of people don't know. So Charles Hoskinson actually helped create Ethereum, which is the second biggest cryptocurrency he eventually left Ethereum and created Cardano, and um, now it's starting to take off as well. So it tells you a little bit more information in regards to who he is, what his team does, um, what makes Cardano unique. So that's definitely important when we're trying to figure out, you know, if we're going to buy this coin or not. So let's read this really quick. Cardano is one of the biggest blockchains to successfully use a proof of stake consensus mechanism. Now, already, if you don't know, we don't want to read a sentence as we're doing research and then be like, okay, if you don't understand the sentence, you need to stop, reread it or Google about it. So for most people, they may not know, they obviously they know Cardano, it's the asset, the biggest blockchain. We've been learning about blockchain. So maybe you do, but maybe you don't, you would Google what, a, what an actual blockchain is. And then you would be like, okay, well, what is proof of stake? Cause I definitely don't know what a proof of stake consensus is. Now I do, proof of stake is the type of blockchain it is. You work off a of proof of stake or proof of work. Um, and there's other ones as well, but you would just Google that. All right, proof of stake mechanism. Let's see what that is. 
So then it tells you right there, proof of stake is a type of consensus mechanism used by blockchain networks to achieve distri distributed consensus. It requires users to stake their whatever asset, for this it said ETH, to stake their ETH to become a validator in the network. Strong, stronger immunity to centralization, proof of stake should lead to more nodes in the network. So basically with proof of stake, you put your funds that you bought. So if you bought Cardano or you bought Ethereum, you would put them into a stake pool and with those funds being inside of that stake pool, it would allow you to make money and validate, become a node validator, right? So even I know just that little bit of information may be over your head, but it'll basically it allow the, the community and the network to run smoothly the more people that stake it. So that's just a type of blockchain called proof of stake. So before we get too deep into that, let's go back to the first page. Um, so we got some more new people in here. What's up, uh, Sarah and Carrie? Hey, guys. Hi. And um, so what would you say your level of crypto uh, knowledge is, Sarah? Oh. Is it, it's a, am I pronouncing it correctly, Sarah? It's Sarah. Sarah, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah, so um, Sarah, actually none. <laughs> no, okay, that's cool. That's, we were just talking about that before. And pretty much, you know, most people that are in here are on the same exact level. So feel free to stop me and ask me any questions at any time. There's no like rules where you, you can't speak. So if someone has a question that goes for everyone, just be like, oh, excuse me. And then we'll, we'll stop and answer it. What's up, Carrie? Hey, Justin, how you doing? Very well. And Carrie's been in here, here before, so she kind of knows how's it, how it works. And Carrie, you already know if you got anything to say, just let me know, okay? Roger that, thank you. Uh-huh. Um, okay, guys, so we'll restart, kind of just hit a quick reset button. Um, so as I was saying to the group for the new the newcomers, this website, CoinMarketCap, is where we start off learning about FA, fundamental analysis, right? So what are the fundamentals of the crypto? You know, and when you think about what are the fundamentals of the crypto, you're thinking about who are they? Who are the people that created it? So who are the, um, who are the CEO, CEOs, I guess, or the creators? Who is the development team? Because a lot of times these web developers may work on one project and then leave and go work on another project and then leave and go work on another project. So if they have a good track record and good success and you find out that they all of a sudden started working on a new project, that could give you confidence to start looking deeper into that project. So again, fundamental analysis, we're finding out who they are. Oh, let me add Z. On fundamental analysis, we're finding out who they are what type of uh, project they're, they're creating, what real world problem does it solve? And then we're moving forward from that point. What's up, Z? Just saying, hey, if you have hey. any questions, if you have any questions, just let me know. What would you say your, uh, your level of crypto knowledge is? Oh yeah, ultimate beginner. <laughs> no worries, You're, everyone is pretty much on the same page here. So um, as I was saying to everyone else, if you, if you need any questions, just pop in, um, don't hesitate. There's no, there's no rush or any type of structure. It's more so just a conversation, so. Okay, cool. All righty. So as I was saying to everyone else, this website right here, you wanna put into your notes, it's called CoinMarketCap. And on this website is where we find out our fundamental analysis of our crypto assets, right? Or our cryptocurrency, same thing. Crypto asset, cryptocurrency, same exact thing. Um, the reason why we're starting to call them crypto assets is because not every crypto is used as a currency. So people get confused with that. Um, alrighty, so now that we have that out of the way, shake it out real quick, right, boom. So coin market cap, we know that we come here for a fundamental analysis. And when we get here, what do we look for? First things first, we're gonna look at the market cap of the crypto. So Bitcoin has almost a 1 trillion market cap, which is humongous. Ethereum, has a, almost 400, a little bit over 400 million, I'm sorry, 400 billion. So it's not even halfway to the pace of Bitcoin. And then the next one down is not even one third of the way to Ethereum. So that kind of lets you know who the big dogs are, right? So obviously Bitcoin and Ethereum, they move the market. When they are doing, when they are happy, when Bitcoin's happy and it's chilling right at, let's say 50K and it hasn't moved in a while, just staying at 50K, that gives us an opportunity for these rest, these small, they're called alternative coins, so altcoins. So anything below 
Ethereum or Bitcoin are considered altcoins. So all these ones down here are all altcoins, right? Oh, of course, now this happens. Um, so if Bitcoin is chilling and it's staying stable at its price, it gives us a chance for all these other alternative coins to start making moves up. But if Bitcoin is down, that scares the market. It makes people think that crypto is not going to be around for the long term and it gives panic. And that alternatively makes most of the other market go down with it. So that's something you want to be aware of when you're, when you're going to buy crypto. You can basically look at Bitcoin and if Bitcoin has been down, it's probably a good day to buy. Because if Bitcoin's down, most of the rest of the market will be down because they're, they're a little shaken, they're a little scared. If Bitcoin is at an all-time high, you might want to double check. We buy crypto on green days and we sell crypto on, I'm, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We sell crypto on green days and we buy crypto on red days. So for this right here, this is green. We would not buy, we would not buy, we would not buy, we would not buy. We would wait and we would wait for it to turn red. And when we see a project that has good FA and good TA, which we're gonna to get to, we would make sure that it's a red day and we would buy it, right? So like this project Solana is a very good project. Today would be a good day to buy, it's 5% off. I don't know anything about this, but let's say, I, let's say we thought it was good. It would be a good day to buy because right here it shows us it's 12% off, right? So we wanna remember that. And if you don't want to go off the 24 hour, you can always go off the seven day. So you just click the seven day. You see, no, we don't like that. I don't want to give you guys the wrong idea. We want to make sure we're buying good stuff. So like this is Dash. Dash is a good project. It's 23% off on the week. It means it's kind of probably a good time to buy. You know, we're getting it, getting it at a discount. Same for Filecoin here. Filecoin, 22% off. It's a good time to buy. So it was, see right here over the past 24 hours, it went up, but it would have been a good time to buy because it would have been 30% off. So this is how you use coin market cap. Again, when you first get here, the first things you want to look out for is at the top, you have the total market cap, 2.5 trillion and the volume. So those are the biggest things. Volume over 200 billion means that a lot of people are buying and selling right now and total market cap over 2 trillion means that it's still a stable market, you know, nothing, no one's taking all their money out. And as you can see, the global crypto market cap is 2.26 trillion, a 1.8% increase over the last day. Alrighty, so let's say we got any questions in regards to that, in regards to coin market cap, and it's okay if you do, I'd rather have a, a open discussion. So if you don't understand something, make sure you're, you're speaking on it because I'd rather take the time and make sure everyone understands. So does anyone have any questions there, about coin market cap? Yeah, is there a preference indicator like between the 24 hour and the seven day or should we like should we be aware of both if if the seven day is red but the 24 hour is green is it still a good time to buy? Oh yeah, that's a good question, right? So like for this one, see obviously the 12 days red and the 24 is, I'm sorry, seven days red and 24 days red. So it's like, okay, maybe that's a good day to buy. Um, usually you want to check the seven day because, you know, the 24 hours, let's say over the 24 hours, it's down 10%. But if the seven day, if it's up 500% over the past week, it's like, oh man, you kind of already, you missed your boat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I normally would just click this. So you see here, this is up a thousand percent, a 1300%. So yeah. if this was red, I would still be like, well, you know, it just went up 1300%. You know, maybe it's not going to go up too much in a little while. You might want to wait. Um, so that is a good question. Thank you. Yes, I would double check here first the seven day and see if the seven day is red. And this isn't a yes or no buy. It's not like, okay, that's the end all be all. It's just something to be aware of, right? Because if you have a great situation, as we'll get further into the call, you'll see, you might have a great setup and a great situation where even though it's a little high right now, you still, you know, you make the determination that you think it's a good time to buy. So, okay, so good question. thank you. Yeah. Anybody else other than y'all? No? Okay. So, commentary on that. Um, so, I like, I, th I think on, well, it was Ian that said this. He was like, he, I don't think he said that the seven day chart was bad, but I think his point that he was making was that 
crypto moves so fast. Whereas like we would use the seven day or like the week or the month for the 30 day in stocks. Crypto 30 days is like a lifetime or like seven days is like a lifetime. Yeah, well, we're not on charts yet. We're not on yeah. charts yet. This is just coin market cap, right? So this is still our fundamental analysis. This is just a quick peek to see what's going on. I would not suggest just clicking on this site only and then only clicking on the seven day and then making your decision. I definitely would not suggest that. This is just to give us an idea as we go into the next part of our research, okay? Because okay. I also use CoinGecko and another mm -hmm. site to do like some fundamental analysis and just just read it up on the news and see what what like you said to try to figure out like what the call it my crypto moat kind of stole that from Wall Street Trapper. <laughs> it's okay, know, like, he stole it from Rule One Investing. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we just borrowed things here. Yeah, uh, you know. So with the crypto moat, like I try to like like you said, try to to see who's on the project, um, what's the idea of the project, and if I if that vibes with me because you see how Shibu Shibu went up and like we have a uh, safe moon those two just seem like they serve no purpose and, and, and even like reading the white paper the white paper doesn't make sense to what either one of those are trying to do <laughs> other than to make somebody rich real fast and then you get left holding the bag like there's yeah. no I know Doge was created as a joke but even Doge now is kind of getting like some usage where people are like putting it out that are supporting it. So I can see how Doge can continue to grow. But like she is just a Doge knockoff. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a joke, but it's like, dude, seriously, you have no use at all. Exactly. You're 100% right. You know, I 100% agree with you. So that's exactly why you want to make sure. Um, as I, I was just on the last call, I think I mentioned to you guys and what I mentioned was you make sure first that you have a real world use case. People are using Bitcoin as a store of value. People are using Ethereum because 83% of all cryptocurrencies, so there's 9,792 cryptos, 83% are built on Ethereum. So that's a real world use case. Binance, obviously I'm using Binance right here. So that's a real world use case. Dogecoin doesn't have a real world use case. Cardano, is a phenomenal project. And if you Google Cardano Roadmap. Cardano is, is getting into Africa. And once I saw that, I was like, oh man, the growth potential on that is ridiculous. Yeah, they just came out with a project called DID, Digital ID. And I just put into the chat um, the link to this website, the Cardano Roadmap. I suggest you guys, when you have time, check that out. Uh, it's a very, very, very great project, in my opinion, that eventually will be up here even higher. It's number five right now. I think it's come to at least number three at some point before the end of the year. Um, so you can check that out as well. But you're exactly right, Carrie, uh, as far as some projects have great use cases, some do not. But when it comes to these, the 24 hour percent and the seven day percent, this is just to get it in our head if we should buy today, if, we can, if we're allowed to buy today. How about that? So it's not whether we should or we should not, it's whether you know we would be allowed to or we would not be allowed to, right? Like, okay, down 12%, I would say you're allowed to buy that. You know, up 15 and up 17, no, you're not allowed to buy that today. Let's wait another day. So that's all we're doing from that that instance, right? It's nothing more or nothing less. Now- what do you think the likelihood of Cardano going back to like a roughly a dollar? Cause I don't think it's hitting back a dollar anytime soon if it even goes back that far. Yeah, well, let's look up the next part of how we would find things out like that. And this is called technical analysis, right? So boom, let's remove these drawings. So this is the next web page. The first web page you guys should save is Coin Market Cap. And like you were saying, Carrie, there are other ones like Coin Gecko and things. But you know, for the newbies and the beginners, we're going to try to stay on the same page. And and these pages are, um, I guess, very well used and they're more user friendly. Um, but you can see right here my favorites. I got Coin Gecko up here as well. But these ones are just a little bit easier to use. So I like teaching with, with uh, these ones. So this is the first website again. Let me copy it and paste it and put it into the chat. Boom. Coin Market Cap is going to be one site you need to add to your little, uh, what is this thing called? Your bookmarks. And then another one you need to add is called Trading View. So I'll put this one in the chat as well. Trading View. Now, Trading View is free, but you can pay to use it. 
Um, and if you pay to use it, you just get a little bit more, obviously, information to use. All righty, so let's start here, and we're going to start with Cardano, because that's just what we've been speaking about. So once you get to trading, you guys, you would hit this top left, boom, you would type in ADA, that's the ticker symbol, symbol for Cardano. On the right-hand side, it just tells you where you're getting this data from, right? So this is giving us data from Kraken. This is giving us data from Bitfinex. This is giving us data from Binance. So we're going to use Binance because that's just what I use. And let me make sure we got this set at 98. Okay. Sorry, I'm super paranoid now because I've messed up a trade when I was on a call. And now I got to really keep track of them. Um, okay, so this is, I set this a while back, it looks like. Let's see what I set up here. So this was the trend line for Cardano. It looks like this bottom trend was a little bit off. Let's draw a new one. Boom. And for trend lines, you start at the bottom of a trend. So see, this is the bottom down here. So we'll start at the bottom of this trend and we make it touch these points, right? So it's gonna touch every little point here, the furthest point it will touch. So if this was the furthest point, this would be where the trend line is, but it's not, this is. So this is where the trend line is. So we put the, excuse me, put the trend line there. All right, boom. So now we have, Cardano, and we can see it goes up to this point and then it always bounces off of there. And then it comes down, bounces off of here, it goes up. So now we can get an educated guess that it's probably going to get to this top point right here and make a little bounce down. And it almost did, got right here. So it got to 195, $2, bounce back, and now it's starting to pull back. Let's see. Boom. And now we're trying to figure out if Cardano is going to see this flag type thing. And let me show you. So this is almost like a flag pole. So we want that trend to continue up and let the flag blow into the wind. Now I'm going to show you how I did all that. First things first, does anyone know what these lines are called right here? This purple one and this pink one. If you're on the last call, you might. Is that the EMA? Again. Yeah, so the, so the moving average, right? So these are moving average lines. So moving okay. average is- the exponential, just a regular moving average. Uh, the bottom one is an exponential and the top one is a regular simple SMA, simple moving average. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it does matter, but for the example that we're showing right here, we can get into the detail of what it is, you know, what type of moving average it is later. But just for the general knowledge for the people that don't know, because we have some beginners, these are moving averages, right? So this is called a moving average. It's just a simple moving average. It combines each one of these bars. Hey, Haja, do you mind uh, just muting your mic, please? All right, sorry, I had to mute you there. Um, so these are moving averages. So cryptocurrency likes to live around its moving average. That's like its home, right? It tries, it wants to go back home. It gets homesick a lot. So what we want to do is we want to plan our buy time around the crypto asset coming home. So this right here would have been a good time to buy. It's around its moving average. If you could have caught this little one back here, good time to buy. because eventually it's gonna break away from its moving averages or break under them. So we got Cardano moving around and then it came down here like 115, 115, all the way down to 95, 101, 126. And now it's done taking off. So now we gotta kind of wait for a pullback to come before we get in. So again, these are your moving averages and Every crypto asset likes to live around its moving average. So eventually at some point, the moving average is compiled of here, I'll bring up the setting. So it's every day, so each bar, each bar is one day and the length of our moving average is 72 days. So we have here a 72 day moving average, that simple. So 72 days. So if we set this back to one day, so now each bar is one day. Of course. 
each one of these bars is one day. And now doo -doo -doo -doo, we can see where the good buys would have been, right? So any time down here by this moving average was a good buy. When it came here for the moving average, it was a good buy. Same good buy. Now this is called a floor. I'm going to set this line. So you can see how it kind of just sits on that line, right? These, these last few candles have pretty much come right to there, sat down. That's a floor. We got another floor right here. See, these candles are all sitting around that same floor. Boom. And let's keep going, set our floors. We got another floor right here. And the floor is pretty much just the turning point, right? It's the turning point or the consolidation point. Like see this floor right here, this is a good one. The longer the floor, see how many candles are just sitting right on that floor? That's called consolidation. The longer that that happens, the more likely that you're gonna get a breakout. So boom, you got this breakout right here. So again, we got consolidation right here. See it's sitting on this floor, they all consolidated. Then we got that breakout. And we can even go back further. Oh, maybe we can't, <laughs> not as much to show. But see, it's pretty much been consolidating this whole time, all the way back to here. It's been consolidating right around this moving average. So this would have been a good time to buy this whole time. So that's what gets frustrating when you like see crypto going into all-time highs and stuff. And you're like, oh man, I missed that. I wish I would have known. It's like, well, yeah, look, it was sitting right here for six months, two months, just waiting for someone to come up and start buying it. So if we would have bought when it was around, it's moving average right here. Look at our run up. We would have got all this. We would have caught all this run up, which would have been huge for us, right? If we would have got it in at 10 cents, I think I bought my first Cardano right here. First time I bought it was right in this run. And I actually went against what I was supposed to be doing, but that's just because I read the white paper and I realized how big of a project it was going to be. And I was like, oh, I'm not missing this. I knew that in the long run, it was going to be way higher, no matter if I got in, you know, in the middle of an uptrend or not. And if you can see, I actually got in there because I believed in the project and it never came back to that line since. So that was a good call. So when we're speaking about like some days, you know, so that I bought on green days in this instance, because clearly it ran up straight for one, two, three, four, five, six green candles. So six days in a row. It just kept going up and up and up. And I still bought it because I understood the white paper and I understood the real world problems it was gonna solve. So that's what I mean when I say, it's not necessarily like a 100% rule, but you do wanna kind of use it as a guide when you're looking at the seven day and the 24 day, just to see the, um, what's been going on with it recently. Alrighty, so what questions do we have in regards to this, the technical analysis? Anybody? Real quick, um, I don't want to confuse anybody, but I remember last time we were talking about when it falls below the moving day average, it's a time to short. So does that little divot with those two red candles not count? Well, remember, I, I had rules to that shorting, though. Do you remember the rules for that? It has to be, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's two of the same color candles, so two red candles below the moving day average. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know. If, no, you're good. You're on the right track. Keep going. Um, I'm not sure if that first red one counts since it's touching, but it did close below. So. Yep. Exactly right. So it did close below, but look, it's all up in here. So if it would not have, if it would not have touched the moving average. Okay. Remember what we said the um. These candles, so look at the actual candle, right? So I'm gonna zoom in so we can really see it. So look at the actual candle. You see how this green candle has almost no, nothing else. It's almost just a block. Like we can barely even it. tell. Yeah, we can barely even tell that there's a wick on there, right? right? That's a solid indication that this trend is going to be strong. That means that the next candle should look somewhat like this, somewhat. Not maybe exactly, but somewhat. And you can see the next candle it looks somewhat with it. it has a little bit more of a wick, but it looks somewhat like it. Then the next candle, 
looks somewhat like it, but even more of a wick until finally it reverses the trend into a red candle, right? So this red one, it closed below it. So good call on that, but it is touching the MA. So we're kind of like, ah, eh, it's like, um, if you're playing spades, it's like a partial, right? It's like, ah, it might hit, but it might not. So let, let me not actually count it, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a good sign, but it's really just a sign for us to look deeper. So then we get this next candle and we can see on this candle, oops, we can see on this next candle right here, this little thin red one. Now this trend is not very strong. You can see it has a bunch right. of wicks and it's kind of just a thin body. So it's like, okay, that doesn't give us a good indication that it's gonna keep going lower. So that's why we would not have shorted there. Now, for instance, if this red candle would have started kind of where this one was and only the wick, only the wick touched the MA. And then we got another one that looked just like it where this one is like lower. So let's say we got, you know, a red candle here and the wick went up to there and the wick went down to here. And then let's say we got another red candle here and the wick went up to there and the wick went down to there. Now that, okay, maybe we're rocking with that because it's starting to go lower and it's a solid candle and the wicks aren't shooting up like this. Where but anytime the wicks are like, you know, a very extended, that means the trend is not as strong as we think it is. And remember the trend is your friend. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> very corny, but that's one of the ways I remember this dude on YouTube just kept hey, saying, the trend friend. is your friend. So, um, <laughs> so you can see right here, right? So this candle looks great, solid, not a lot of wick, green, positive. Next candle, it looks pretty good. It's solid, but it's starting to kind of have some wicks. So the trend is like, you know, kind of getting watered down. The trend is weakening. And then you can see on the very next candle, the trend got very weak and it's like, okay, maybe I need to, like for me as a day trader, like if I would have bought here, I would have been hype on this candle, hype on this candle. I would have seen this candle and been like, oh, I'm selling. <laughs> I would have sold as high as I could. I would have waited for the next candle to see if it was green or red. And then once that next candle closed, I might've got back into the trade. So that was a very good call, Sarah. Um, and you know, you were, you were exactly on the right track, except we just needed a couple more confirmation candles that looked, um, you know, more solid, but that was a good call. Okay. And Did that, go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> no, nah, don't be sorry. Like it, it helps me. So no, nah, you're good. I was just curious. Um, do you ever trade gaps? Like, I know you pointed out the flag, and I'm not too familiar with reading candles in that sense. I, I'm still learning. But mm -hmm. when I saw the flag you pointed out, I also saw a gap. So I'm thinking, yeah, it reaches that it reached that high, but I feel like it's gonna pull back, pick some more buyers up, and then shoot to the roof. But I don't know which trade, if either, is more um, stronger or takes precedence over the other. Yeah, so it's weird, right? It's um, when you come to the reading the candles, there's so much that goes into it that could cancel out what you know what you think is happening, right? So, and I mean, I'm not above anyone or anything like that with with this stuff. I've definitely like been watching something and said to myself like, oh, this is this is setting up perfect. And then, you know, hit somebody up that also does things like this. I'm like, yo, did you see this on the on the one day chart or whatever? And they're like, yeah, but did you see this? And then that thing that they mentioned completely cancels out what I was seeing. Right. Yeah. So I definitely do trade gaps. Um, I think they're they're huge. I think we went over those um, the last time, too, where we saw like it was a downtrend and we saw a couple gaps. So we knew those would be filled on the uptrend. So that oh, okay. so um, I do trade gaps as well. Um, and I'm not, you know, I called out that flag, but I'm also not the best at doing that. So I just read more and more about it and try to learn more and more about it. And as you go through it, you kind of start picking up better tips to go by and uh, find out, you know, what you like and what you like to trade. But, you know, I do trade the gaps. It just depends on what trends you find. And again, some trends cancel out other trends. It's, um, it's like weird math in a way, you know, like, oh, uh, two negatives make a positive type thing. So. Yeah, I feel you. I was just curious because I I'm still learning the different ones, so I didn't know if you ever find one that works more than the other. But it's true, you just have to like take them all into consideration and read more of the candles to see what makes sense for the next move to be. Very true, exactly. Because um, you know, you might see something and it makes sense, 
And then let's say you put in the trade and you end up losing the trade and you're like, dang, I lost the trade. And you're like, what, what the heck? Like, what? Because I, when I lose a trade, especially if I lose a trade bad, I try to go back here to the charts and be like, what did I miss, man? I thought I, thought I had that. And then sometimes mm -hmm. I'll go back here and I'll be like, oh, well, you know what I didn't look at? I didn't look at the stochastic RSI, which is, for those that don't know, relative strength index. I didn't realize that the, it was oversold or something. And that, that would cause to start dropping a little bit. Or, you know, there's different little things. That's like a basic example. But, you know, so it's just after you do a trade or while you, before you do a trade, you just double, triple, quadruple check everything so that you can try to be, you know, as sure as you possibly can be. For sure. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. Did uh, anyone else have any questions in regard to, to this, the, the charting part, the technical analysis? No? Okay. So this next thing is called a Fibonacci retracement. So this is a Fibonacci retracement tool. And what we'll do is we'll do um, actual chart days, right? So I think what I'm going to start doing is inside the Zoom signups, we'll have a day where it's only for charts and maybe a day where it's only for fundamental analysis. So that way um, it won't get as repetitive for the people that do like to come back. And then that way you can pick a day that's like, okay, this is what I'm trying to really go hard on and learn. And then we can go about it that way. But so don't worry about this being too over your head right at this moment. Um, it will come to you and, and we do this every single day. So just hop back into a Zoom whenever you're ready. So this is called a Fibonacci retracement. And the way you set a Fibonacci retracement is you find a bottom. So right here, we see a floor. Right here, we see a floor. And let me know, do you guys see this floor? Like when I say that, do you understand? Do you see what I'm talking about when I say this floor? Anybody? I mean, it's just the bottom of it, like like a, a the bottom of the, the wicks, right? Yes. Like two, yep. two next to each other? Is two enough it's, to constitute a floor? Exactly. Good call. That's a great question. Two is enough, is enough to constitute a floor, but you kind of want to do it with the understanding of like, okay, I understand there's only two here, right? So it's like like this small that's a small floor right there we got one two three touching it um let's see this floor see a little bit above but obviously i'm not going to set this right like i'm not going to say oh this is a floor and this is a floor that doesn't quite make sense it's not enough data to, to understand what you're trying to look at so we'll just set the floor as all of these right here now this is where you get your numbers this is where you get your entry points this is where you get your understanding of where things will go so Setting your floors is important, but it's also based off like what you think, right? The better you get at it, the better your entries will be. So even though like this to me is a floor right here. And the reason why, one second here. Is you have those two. Exactly. With that. Exactly. So even though it's not perfect, right? So we got this one candle wick going all the way down. You got two over here, you got this. It's like, how is this a floor? But when you when you look at it, it's like, okay, you have this big run up with green, right? And then it pulled back and it was trying to figure out, you can see all these wicks. So it was not a strong trend, right? Because it has all these, let me move this. It was not a strong trend because you had all these wicks, 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 wicks everywhere. And wicks just mean that it can't make up its mind what it wants to do. It can't make up its mind if it wants to stay green or if it wants to go red. If it, you know, so that's where you get all these wicks at. You have the bears trying to make it go down and sell, and you have the bulls trying to buy it up, and that's what causes the wick. So if we're on a one-day chart and each candlestick is one day, that means that this this candlestick right here, this one, it's a solid candlestick. Everybody on this day, February 10th, 2021, the day trade at the bottom, on this day, you can see everybody was buying. It's full, it's thick. It only has a small little wick at the top. It's a, it's a very good day. Everyone was bullish. And then you can see the bears tried to come in and they tried to get us to go lower. They were selling us wicks. They were trying to get to go low, trying to get to go low, trying to get to go low. But none of these wicks really show that, you know, the bulls, the people that wanted to go up, they weren't giving up. They were like, well, no, nah, we're not going to let you form a solid candlestick. Like, no. And eventually, the bulls 
uh, one, and now we went up again. And then we had another bullish day. And then it's the same thing. The bears came back and said, no, no, no. Then the bulls came in and said, yes. Then we went back up. And then that's how you follow the trend, right? That's how you see if, you know, what's going on. So you look at the candlestick, you look at the wicks, you look at the candlesticks next to it to get an understanding trend. Any questions with that stuff on like basically on what a candlestick is? Like it's, it's important to understand that this right here, this green one is a good candlestick. It's full bodied. It only has a little bit of a wick. It's even better to have a candlestick like the one that we showed back here, right? So this candlestick is very nice. Full bodied, it only has a top wick, which means it only almost went higher. It never really went lower than where it started. Obviously this red candle, this red candle right here, a T or a cross pattern, you can see that that's really not a great wick. It's not a very strong trend. It's, there's not a lot of confirmation that you can go off of that. Even the next one with that super wick down, it's like, okay, you guys wanted to go down there, but you didn't hold it. So if the body of the candle is shorter than the size of the wick, then you know it's not a good trend. It's not really setting a trend. Almost like and market indecision. Exactly, exactly. There's somebody fighting into the market, right? Some people are saying it should go higher. Some people are saying it should go lower. And that's what this is. That's what you see when you see here. You see, it was green and they tried to push it up to the top. Let me see if I can do this. It was green and they tried to push it up to this top right here, right at the top. But it was, then it went red and they tried to push it all the way down here. And then they came to a mutual decision to close the candle right here. So, so that's... Can we, what you can we come up with another corny thing? Because right now I just got to like the wicks can make you sick because they're all indecisive. <laughs> yep, that's a great one. I like it. And those yeah. corny say, those corny sayings stay with you. So, you know it's what I mean? Sick, they, it, yeah. they pop in your head. And you're like, nah, that wick don't make me sick. I'm okay on that. <laughs> so that's more than fine. Good call. Good call, Carrie. Um, okay, so let's go back to we found our floor, right? Boom, this is our floor. We see here, this is what we're just going to use for the current trend. And actually, I would set the floor a little bit lower. Boom. Set the floor a little bit lower. There we go. We see here. And now we're going to throw in a Fibonacci retracement. And we're going to see from the start of this new uh, trend, right? So we got one, two, one. The trend kind of started to die on this next floor here. So we're going to take a Fibonacci and see all the way to the top, the highest price and then extend it over, and then try to get an understanding of what's gonna happen in a couple of days to come. And we know that with Fibonacci, the golden level is 0.618. So this, uh, I guess, medium dark, medium dark green zone. So from right, let me zoom up. So this is our golden level. Anything inside of this zone, is just means this is where the retracement was gonna come down to, right? And you can see this green one came down here and then they, uh, the bears pulled it down here, but at the end of the day, they closed up here. They were like, nope, we're not doing that. So they tried to pull us down to our 61 level, but we weren't having it and we closed up here. Now we would continue to watch Cardano and what we would do is we would set a limit order. So we would go back into our, um, whatever marketplace we use, and we can go over here to limit and we can set the exact price that we wanted at. So let's click on Cardano. So boom, it's at $1.90 right now. We think that our golden level is $1.53 to $1.61. So we would just go in here and what's between that 151 and 161, let's say 1.56. So that, again, that number is just between 151 and 161, 1.57 even. And then we set our limit order. And let's say we set it for, you know, whatever, 10 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever we do. And then you place the order, boom. And now you don't even have to worry about it. Now you did your homework, you have your order set. They're gonna hold the money 
in your account, right? So it's not spent yet, but you can't use it because you got it set to be used for this. So there, so as long as you have that hundred bucks in your in your trading account, it'll be sitting right there. And now we just chill. We're out doing our day. We're going to work. We're not worried about anything. And what we would do is just set a little alert. So let's say we like this price right here. We would hit the plus sign, add alert. Now our alert is set for this area. And once the price comes down, like I have my alert set to my email. So boom, it comes down. I get an email. I get excited. I click on this. I see the current prices out, let's say 160. I know my entry is 157. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm reassured. And once I get that alert, I come back to this page. I remove all my drawings and I just double check all my information, right? So I'm like, okay, I remembered why I did all that stuff. And then I remove it and then I redo it because now let's say a few days have passed by, let's say something has changed. So we just want to double check that, you know, most of our data and our information is still the same. We don't want to, again, Bitcoin moves the market. So what if Bitcoin was dropping to an all new all time low? Well, that's probably why, you know, the price of ADA would have came down to our buy zone. So we want to make sure that Bitcoin stabilizes before we just randomly start throwing our money in the ADA, because let's say if it didn't and Bitcoin kept going down, then that could cause uh, Cardano ADA here to keep coming down past our level as well. So that's what I mean with, by double checking your work. But if you double check your work and everything looks good from when you first started, then you're good to go. You let that trade execute and now you're in the trade and now you wouldn't have to worry about it. So this is exactly what I did for this trade right here this morning, right? So let's pull up Bitcoin and I'll show you like exactly what I did. All right, so this is a one day, we're gonna switch it to a four hour. So you should start on one day, just so you can see the trend and then you can switch it to four hours. So that way you can see what's going on inside that trend. Boom, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So this morning, I saw it around the moving average. I saw a crossover. And then look, so Sarah, this is exactly your question, right? I saw it hit here and I was like, okay, boom, it's underneath my moving average. And then we get this candle wick and look at the, let me remove this so you can see. Look at this candle wick, right? What we just say about candle wick, the body is very long. The body is thick. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like the wicks, right? The wick is not longer than my body. So that kind of indicates a strong trend. So I went ahead and put on my uh, Fibonacci. But instead of starting at the bottom, like I would normally do to see how high it's going, mm -hmm. instead of doing that, I started at the top and I seen how low it was going. And I just brought it down. And where do I stop? I stop at the moving average because where do, where do we most of the time the, um, the coin stop? At the moving average, right? So, oh my goodness, hold on. Uh, that. So you would short here. Well, I well, mean, so, go ahead. I'm thinking, so I see two red candles fully under that first moving day average. I'm thinking if I were to get in on that green candle, I would catch the wick business and make some money as long as I closed out of it. But I don't know if I'm thinking the same because like I said, I'm thinking like, futures trading now as opposed to crypto i don't know how different it is but um, uh, futures are futures right so we're, so i trade futures but this still works for even if you're not going to necessarily be trading even if you're just buying and holding at least it gives you an idea of where you should okay. enter so yeah, you know okay. it's, just to get the lowest yeah price. yeah just because you know obviously if you're buying and holding you still want to have a good entry and then this will give you confidence if you buy in at a good price and then maybe it gives you confidence to start trading because now you see the trends. So you, sh in my opinion, if you're going to be doing this and you want to take it, you know, a little bit serious, you should learn this stuff just so that way you have it in your tool belt. So that way you're, it's a lot of this stuff, anything with money comes with emotion. So you don't want to have your emotions so tied to your, your, your trades and your entry points that you're like, you know, making yourself upset about it. You want to be able to have something to stand on with it. Like, well, no, nah, I did this because Justin showed me how to use the Fibonacci retracement. 
And so he showed me that this top trend line went down. So I ran my retracement down to the moving average. And then I see that this is a floor level, right? So this is a floor level because of the Fibonacci showed me that. This is yeah. a floor level because the Fibonacci showed me. And you know, so we'll set our Fibonacci floors. And this one I'll do back at the moving average. And now we can go ahead and remove the Fibonacci if we wanted to, but we don't have to because I want to show you something. Mm -hmm. So if we know our golden level is 0.618, so I think it's going back up here. So now I think it's going up here. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I ran the trend line down. I knew it would probably touch this moving average. So I set a buy. Yeah. I set a buy at this moving average. And I set a buy at this trend level. So 48.8 is where I set it. So 48.8 right here. So I was watching these candles, right? I saw this floor. This is a floor inside my Fibonacci. So I seen that this candle ended there, this candle ended there. There was only wicks below there. So I set that as my entry price, $4,800, $800. And you can see it right here on the entry price, $4,800, $800. And I just set that floor and I just forgot about it. I just walked away. I just didn't think about it because if you do think about it, you'd be sitting here like, oh, is it going to get there? Is it going to get there? So, so you just set it, you know, you walk away. And then boom, I get a notification that my order was filled. I was like, okay, cool. And then I come back here and now I see the candles all the way up here and I'm feeling elated, right? I'm like, wow, I was actually right. I set my trend down. I set my order for in between the bottom of the moving average and the last level floor, which is right in the middle here, right where this last candle went to. It came down, it hit that perfectly. My order was executed and now it's already up. So now I'm just sitting back chilling and I come into here and I set my stop loss. So you can see on my stop loss, I have it to, if it goes up to 55,350, I'll close out my trade and I'll make 800 bucks. And if it goes down under 49,600, it'll close out the trade and I'll make a hundred bucks. So once you have your entry point, I can't lose now because I it went up and it's up here and my entry, my stopping point now is here. So no matter what, it'll end above my entry. Um, so yeah, so that's how you work with the Fibonacci and you set your levels and you make your decisions based off of that knowledge. Um, so you use that as well as the knowledge that you got from here. You combine those two, Carrie, is what we were saying. That's why I said, you know, sometimes you do still buy on green days, and, but you need to have a good ass reason why. And this, if you show me something like this, I could be like, okay, well, maybe that's a good enough reason why. And you should go ahead and do that. Any questions on that stuff? You're pretty much good. I mean, I know there's like, obviously there's, you know, there could be questions and this is a lot of information, but just in general, were there any questions of like, okay, well, what, maybe why did you do this or how did you see that? Anybody? I do have a question about, you said that the FIB golden area is 0.618. Is that just like a general rule of thumb or is that like, how'd you come to that? Yep, it's just uh, it's just generally known as a general rule of thumb that it's called the golden level. So if you do any reading, if you guys just Google, you know, Fibonacci and you know Fibonacci day trading or Fibonacci uh, charting, you can just learn a lot about it. It's a very very useful tool and it's very accurate as well. So they use the 61 level. Now usually I don't do this reverse level. Uh, most of the times I do not do it down, but I've seen someone else do it and I and I started trying it and it was pretty accurate so i was like okay well let me try to use it so most of the times i use a fibonacci up where you start at the floor and you run it up and then that would give me this level right here so and my instances, oh sorry justin no go ahead what's the question in both instances when we do this we still stay within the like we stay between the floor and like the top of the EMA, right? Or then we'll stay or we'll go to like the EMA down to the floor if you're like shorting. Um, hold on, I'm not quite understanding your question. So, <clears throat> so you see if you stop your like the top of your rotation is it's like at the is at the purple line, right? And then like you kind of went down below the the, the red line. Um, what, with my Fibonacci, you mean? 
Yeah. Okay, no, so I tried to, or I may have messed up, but I tried to do this. I tried to go, so this, so instead of this being the floor and going up, right? Yeah. Instead of us doing that, I looked at this as the floor and going and down. And you went down, okay. And I stopped at the moving average. Okay, so that was my question. So like you started at the, 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 the top of that candle, well, that wick, but that's like a wick. I'm not I'm not squared on like candles and wicks yet, but like the wick make you sick. Like that's gonna stick in my head that to know like if I see if I see a long wick and a short body, you know, that's watch out. That's that's that, that's not a good thing. Yeah, that's so a, yeah, a long wick and a short body is kind of like unusual activity, right? That's what that means. Yeah. It's like unusual activity. Now, see this wick, this is a normal wick for this candle. Like the candle is pretty long and the wick is a little long, but you know, that's normal. Look how big the candle is, right? But yeah. compared to like this green one, this wick is crazy yeah, that, long. That candle's real, that candle's real short and that wick is crazy long. So I'm like, yeah, that, that would be a no for me, dog, like right there. It, exactly, exactly. But when we're setting our Fibonacci, when you're setting anything almost, the only thing, the only time you go off a wick is setting is when I showed you these, when you're setting your uh your trend lines, right? When we're setting these these trend lines to go up like that. That's when yeah. you that's when you go off a wick, but most of the time for most of the time you want to use the body of the candle because that right. gives you the closes. So the close, if it's red, the close is right here at the bottom. So this is the close. Let me uh, highlight it. Hold on. So this is the close, right? Boom. That right there. And the same for this one. This would be the close. It's a red candle, the close is at the bottom of the candle. So for the green candle, like this one, the close is at the top. Close at the top, right here, close at the top. A green candle means the top is the close. A red candle means the bottom is the close. You guys are seeing that, understanding that? Yeah. Green, green candle. And we're not talking about wicks here. We're talking about the actual candle, right? So this is a green yeah, candle. Yep, so this is a green candle. So boom, that's where it closed up there. Same for these, it's a green candle, so it closed up there. Compared to a red candle, which obviously would have closed right there. Red candle would have closed right there. Red candle would have closed right there. So that's how you see. So that's why I started my reverse Fibonacci at the right at the uh, bottom of that. Boom, I ran it to the bottom here. And I stopped at the moving average because normally you stop at the all time high but we're gonna stop at the all time low, even though it's not the all time low, it's the most recent low, right? So boom, you could even, um, and I, when I set this Fibonacci, this candle wick wasn't here yet. So that's why I wouldn't have set it, set it to there. Okay. And then, so then I just kind of wait, I have an idea. I set my buy price and then I hoping, so I set my buy price down here in the sense that I did all this work thinking that it would get to here, I would buy, and then it would go back up to around the 61 level. And then that's where I could sell, or at least along this route somewhere, I could de decide where I wanted to sell, right? Right. So that's how we did that. And All we right. are crushing this trade, guys. All right, so since we're having a good day, we're crushing this trade, let's go ahead, you guys are with us. So I do this randomly um, for the people that join. So I'm happy for y'all to be here. Let me enter everybody's name into the spinning wheel uh name wheel and we'll go ahead and send out some crypto to somebody that wins on the wheel of names because we are winding down here to finish this boom so we got priscilla what's up priscilla sorry i left you in the waiting room for a little while i was in teacher mode but just come back another day and we'll get you right or uh message crystal we can get a one-on-one -on -one session something like that all right we got hi Nina. thank you that'd be awesome all right, sounds good. I know good. that's that's my fault. I mistakenly read. I missed the Eastern time. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. That's my fault. But I do want to come back and start it from the beginning. This is really interesting, and I have a lot of questions. But oh, uh, you can ask them something. now. Uh, I'll wait till I watch the whole thing because I'm sure they probably would have been <laughs> All right, sounds good. Thank you, though. <laughs> Honestly, too, guys, like. I mean, I'm still learning, but in the beginning, I would never say anything when I'm learning from different people because I'm super shy. But you ask a question and most like more times than none, someone has the same question. It's just 
that person was brave enough to speak. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's <laughs> definitely true. true. And that I try to make it um like I try to make it as interactive as possible. If you ever meet me in real life, I'm like the most sociable, hey, how you doing type of guy. So, you know, I try to bring that through on here. So the more and more you guys come, the more and more you'll feel comfortable. Like, oh, okay, I know he's just a normal dude. I'm not some high up almighty well. <laughs> you didn't know this. It's not it's not. I don't know. You are in the Bahamas. Oh, you know, that's just because I keep that tan. I keep my tan <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no, I've had people on the call ask me like, okay, so do, so when we're buying these coins, do we like, do they mail us the coins or how do we get the coins? And, you know, I'm not going to, that's just something that some people don't know. Like, obviously all the coins are digital. It's all digital. But if you don't know that, no one's going to laugh or make fun of you. It's not that type of setting here. It's, it, we're here to learn. So it's all good. Any question? No, there's no dumb questions. Um, all right. So. We're gonna spin that two or three times to let it get random, and then we'll spin it one more time. And whoever wins will share with me some of the winnings of our trade here that we had. Now you ain't getting all of it, but you can get a little piece. <laughs> all right, so uh, Z won the first one. Now we're gonna spin it three times, and then the fourth time will be the actual winner. In the interest of no stupid question, can I ask one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, well, um, that was my fake excitement because <laughs> I know that one's practice. Yeah, but, all right, um, so, go ahead, in Market question? Mondays, they said, um, like, um, Rashad was talking about how he was having an issue with Binance, but the mm -hmm. platform Binance. So, should we still feel okay buying Binance coin? Or is that like an issue if we're in the U.S. Um, versus like the international issues he was talking about? Uh, so BNB, the actual the actual coin, there shouldn't yeah. be an issue. There shouldn't be an issue around. So what's going on right now is they're <laughs> they're trying to crack down on people like me, right? So I'm using a VPN to access the Binance.com website to trade futures, which is not allowed in America. So they're trying to crack down on Binance for people because they're allowing people like me to do so. And they're just trying to basically say, we said it's not allowed in the US. That's why you made Binance.us. So you need to work on that. And if you don't, then maybe we're gonna say, you know, you have to stop doing whatever you're doing. Um, so that's why I took off most of my, most of my um, currency, most of my money that I had on Binance. I moved it off of here in case they do try to like, you know, something funny. But I still have a little bit of amount on here because I still use this every day to make money. So, but you guys can just Google this, um, Binance IRS, and then you can see seven hours ago, DOJ IRS investigating Binance exchange. Um, oh, wow. So I'll add this to the chat here. So that's the issue that you've been hearing. If you've been hearing about you know, that question, it's not anything that really has to do with the coin, the Binance coin. It's more so the platform. The IRS is coming at the platform because they're, they're basically saying you need to work harder to stop, you know, people that aren't allowed to use your site. Because there's people like, I haven't made a bunch of money, but they have on here what it's called is a leverage, right? So right here, I could put up, I could put up a trade with only $100. But with this leverage account, I can do, let's say, 50 times leverage, then that $100 turns times 50. And so then my actual amount that I'm using, like you look over here, so I, the trade is my margin. I put up $296.47, but the, they're basing the movement off of me putting up $6,000.40. And that's called leverage, right? So I'm using 20 times leverage to make my position seem larger than it actually is, which just makes my payout either much higher or much lower, depending on if I lose money, I'll lose more money, or if I make money, I'll make more money. That's called leverage. So they don't like that because it's not your actual money? Is well, that they, they don't like it just because it's America. Cool. Yeah, it's just, it's just the US and the US wanting to be able to control and run what they want to control and run, so. That's why they're just saying that, well, we said U.S. customers can't do that. So that's why, you know, you need to work on your website and make it harder for U.S. customers to do that is pretty much what's going on. And it's only because they're not, the IRS isn't getting paid because there's nothing that links my name 
to this account, right? So this account, there's nothing, this is just a random email and that's it. I'd never put my debit card in. I've never, you know, taken a picture on here. You can see that little tab, it says unverified. They have no information of who I am except for this email. So that's but why, that's why that's cracking down. Doesn't it link to your bank account? No. I mean, if it's you, if you, if you, crypto. yeah, if you link to your bank account, so which I linked, highly would not yeah. suggest doing, but right. yeah, as long as you don't link your bank account, because now I can just go to my wallet and I can just transfer the funds that I have in here to, to my ledger. That's anonymous. <laughs> <Gotcha>. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we get down with that. Yeah. But it, like this is the easiest. Hour. Go ahead. Like you said, we're funding Binance, right? And you also said don't buy your ledger off of Amazon. Is that because they could like, they could like, I feel like there's a way that they'd be able to track you like that? I mean, I don't know necessarily about tracking you, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, like if you buy, you don't want to buy a security device off of any site other than the site it's from right because if it's for security you don't want to buy it and then you know who knows if it's fully secured someone could have bought it took it home modified it in some way and just posted it on amazon to sell and then now you're getting some type of modified device that you don't you know you don't know how legitimate it is basically and technically they, they that that person could technically be able to, to track your wallet and then withdraw funds from your wallet and transfer it to another location where you can't get it i mean so, yeah like depending on the level of education and knowledge of the the person you know that, that's that's there are some bad people in the world so yeah i'm sure there are some bad people in the world that were like okay let me buy 20 ledgers and re and you know modify them repost them on amazon and then after a year of people using them thinking everything is good i i take all the money from them or something you know so that's why i just say when it comes to the security stuff you know, you want to go directly to the, the websites, right? You want to you want to go directly to ledger.com. And it's an international website um, out of France. So when you order your ledger, it actually comes from France. So you want to come here and make sure that, you know, you just have something legitimate. I don't want to buy, even like I did a giveaway and like, I know I'm a good person. And most of the people that are in like my sessions are know me from either personally knowing me or they know me from uh, my EYL, Earn Your Leisure group. So like, you know, there's a pretty good understanding that like, I'm not trying to, I'm doing this for free every single night. I'm not, I'm not trying to make money or steal from people. So, okay, for me, yeah, I might accept a giveaway from me. But if it was someone I didn't know that was just like, oh yeah, I'm giving away a ledger. Do you want one? I'd probably be like, ah, no, nah, I'm cool. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and buy mine to make sure there's no issues and no nothing. So when it comes to security, you, you can't really be too safe, especially if you're you know, if what happens, ha if what we think is going to happen does happen, and all our crypto continues to go up and up and up over the years, how sick would you be? You'd be way sicker than a wick if, if all your money was taken off your ledger and you didn't know about it. Yep. But the thing about the ledger that drives me crazy is the ability to, to just lose it. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, I like, is there some kind of backup or... Like where would where do you put something that you never want to like catch fire or lose? Yeah. So the good thing about the good thing about the ledgers, you can lose the physical device. You can lose it. You can throw it away. You can burn it. You can do whatever you want. The thing that you need to have is called your seed phrase. So when you get your device, it'll randomly generate twenty four words, and those twenty four words are pretty much your recovery for your ledger. So as long as you have those 24 words, either memorized, written down, tattooed on your body, hidden under your bed, whatever the case is, as long as you have those 24 words, you can just buy a new ledger and just upload, you know, upload the data to it with your recovery phrase. So that's the thing that you can't lose is the, the 24 word seed phrase is a thing that you can't lose. Um, but obviously you could just write it on a piece of paper and go put it in the bank, go put it in a safety deposit box, go put it wherever you want, wherever you think it's safe. If that answers your question, Salil. Yeah, it does. I didn't. I I just was stuck on. You cannot. Yeah, I can understand that because look, I I'm I'm a forgetful guy. If you guys see my desk right now, there's stuff all over the place. But it's like um the the thing that really eased my mind, and I actually didn't know that 
I found that out later after I'd already purchased it. And that just kind of made me be even more happy about it. Like, oh, cool, awesome. Um, so yeah, as long as you have your seed phrase, a 24 word seed phrase, then you're good to go. Um, it'll come, you can still recover the funds, so. And there's also this tool right here, it's called a Kobo tablet. And this thing is fireproof and like supposedly indestructible in all ways. And what this does is it actually stores your seed phrase inside of it. So that way you'll never lose it. And I just added that to the chat as well. So there's this device to help with that exact thing too. So you write on it? Um, you. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly how it works. You input the, I think it has a different letters right here, right? So you just put in your little ledgers, ledgers, <laughs> letters. You'd be good to go. And it looks like it doesn't fit. It looks like it just does four digits of a word. So, so let's say you had one word named phone. That was one of your speed phrases. If you see P-H-O-N, you're probably like, okay, I, I, I know that's phone. <laughs> N-E-X-T, I know that's next. F-A-V-O, probably favor. And then you just go about it like that. But yeah, so this right here is um, also, it's good for seed phrases, if you're, if you're worried about that. Do we have uh, any other questions right now? Does that only hold one seed phrase or is it multiple seed phrases it can hold? Bless you, Blake. Um, it depends. So I believe this one in particular only holds one, but I think there's devices that they sell um, that it'll, it can hold multiple. So um, Alistair, if any of you guys know Alistair, he's the one that put me onto these. I didn't know about him. So I don't know the full details of him, but he told me about them and he definitely said that they're very useful. So. All right, so we did an hour and a half. Well, we started a little bit late, so hour and 15. Um, did anyone else have any questions like in regards to some of the stuff we went over, whether it's fundamental analysis on coin market cap, uh, whether it's technical analysis, looking at the charts or anything? Would you show me um, what button you hit in trading view to do the moving average? I missed that part, I'm trying to. Sure. Yeah, I'll sure. With you. Please. One second, no problem, no problem. Alrighty, so when we first get the trading view, this is, I can't mm -hmm. go to a blank page because actually, yes, I can, hold on one second. Boom, there we go. Okay, so when you first get here, it'll just look like this, right? And then you have your top left-hand side. Is... You good? You calling somebody? <laughs> uh, you got your top no, left-hand side. No, my computer's just making noises. I'm not touching anything. <laughs> That's weird. Um, okay, no worries. So you got your top left-hand side is where you'll pick what you want to look at, what asset you want to look at, right? Let's just say it's Bitcoin for the example. Boom. And then we're going to change it to a one day to get a good picture of what's been going on lately. And then after we get a good picture of what's been going on lately, we can switch it down to a four hour. So I'll leave it on one day, but just remember one day and four hour are going to be the ones you, you use the most. One day, four hour. So boom. So we got the type of uh, asset we want to look at, Bitcoin. We got it set to one day or four hour. We come over to our indicators. Now I already have some saved that I use a lot, but you can just click on indicators and type in what you want. So we're going to type in moving average. And again, we're just using a regular moving average. So you hit it once and it pops up here on the left. You hit it again and you get another one on the left. And then inside of here, you go into the settings, the little wheel on inside the moving average. You hit settings. You set this for one day because you want to do a 72 day, 72 day moving average. And then the style is just the, the color and like the uh, width, the thickness of the candle. You pick whatever color you want, whatever ones you know you like. So the purple line is now the 72 day. And then we do the same thing here, except we make it a 140 day, oops, 140 day. Let's do the same thing with our style, make it a little bit more visible, change the color. Okay. And then now we got our moving averages set. Okay, and got it, you thank you. Averages. No problem. Thanks. And then any, and any other indicators will be right here as well. 
So let's say, you know, you get really interested and you want to try to use another um, indicator, you would just come up here and then type it in whatever it is, you know. So I use this one, stochastic RSI, and I also use the MACD. And then boom, and now, and now your chart is set up with your indicators, and then it's just up to you to figure out what's going on inside of the chart, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, no problem. Anybody else? Any questions about the FA, fundamental analysis, or the TA, the technical analysis? All right, guys. Well, if there's no more questions, then let's spin this wheel one more time. If you guys could, this is the only advertisement sales thing that you're going to get from me. Just please like, subscribe to my YouTube. That's it. Short and sweet. That's all. That's the only thing I ask. <laughs> it's a, it, it'll help me out. Um, even if you don't necessarily use it that much, it'll help me out with the, the subscribers. So that's it. Let's spin this thing. Let's see who's going to win. Can you put your YouTube in the chat, in the chat your YouTube link? Mia, you are the winner. No way. <laughs> you are the winner, Mia. So, um, so, what Mia. Is, <laughs> so, so what you're going to do, Mia, is um, I'll either, do you, do you follow my at, um, but would you Instagram? Yes. Okay, so just DM me. So go into your Coinbase and you should have, in your Coinbase, you should have, um, you can go to Cardano, ADA, ADA. So if you want, because I know you're really new. So if you want, I can kind of walk you through how to do it right now. But you're going to go into your Coinbase. You're going to find ADA Cardano. And then okay. you, should, you should be able to find a wallet inside of that. So if you click on ADA Cardano, then it should say right there, like um, your wallet for it, right? Okay. And then it'll have an address for, for you to receive ADA. It should have an address for you to oh. receive ADA. Oh, 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 okay. And if you, and then so just, so just DM me that address and that way I can send you the, the, the prize. Oh, okay. I see it. ADA wallet. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have no transactions. Oh, okay. Enable receiving. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. One more step. Okay. Okay. So I have to verify some stuff. Okay. Yeah, so once you get all that done, just DM me. It'll give you an address. It's called your wallet address. So just DM me that, and then I can send you over uh, your winning. Okay, so my Instagram, it only has like two little kids on there with no posts, but it's me. <laughs> no worries. Well, yeah, just DM me <laughs> so that way I, I know it's you. I don't want to go looking for you and send money to the wrong person. So just DM okay. me. But yeah, so this is, um. so the link is in the chat for everyone. If you could really quick, I know it only takes like 30 seconds, but just click on the link and just hit subscribe. For me, um, even if you're not, even if you don't use YouTube, you don't watch too much, it definitely does help me out, and I would really appreciate it. It's the only uh, type of payment I, I ask for. So, all right, guys. Um, until tomorrow, if you guys want to join tomorrow, uh, just pretty much do the same thing. The link will be in the bio, and if you can't find it, just DM me or email me, and I'll get it over to you, and and we'll be good to go. Okay, guys. Thanks, Justin. Thank you, all right, thank, thank you. you. So no problem, Definitely guys. Have a good guys. night. Awesome. Have a good night. I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Good night. Thanks. Good night.